Mishnah, Kuf Beis, we're on Kuf Beis, Amad Aleph, the top of the page. Zok to Mishnah, is that where we're holding actually? No, wait, can't, can't, can't skip, can't skip. Well, Kuf Aleph, Amad Beis, right in the bottom. That's Mishnah, the bottom of the Amad. Nagar, we're talking today about a bolt that you close a door with. So in those times, they didn't have proper locks, so they used this bolt the, to put into the ground, to hold the door in place, to, close, to lock the door. I have a picture of it if you want to see over here. Picture Tov Kuv Tzadik Ches, Tov Kuv Tzadik Tes. Okay, so this bolt that's, that closes the door. Sheyesh Bereshe Glustere. And it has, at the, at the tip of it, it has this knob to hold, to hold on to it. Rabliyaza Oyser. Rabliyaza says you can't use it to close the door on Shabbos. What's the reason? Because, going back to what we learned before, when you have this bolt that you put in, you put out, when you put it back in, it looks like you're adding something to the building. It's mechzi kebayna. And the chiddush here is, even though it has this knob on the top, and this bolt could theoretically be used for other things. It could be used as a keli to, to crush garlic with it. It could be used for other things. But nevertheless, you're not allowed to use it to close the door with it. Rabbi Yaisi says it's allowed. Um, Rabbi Yaisi so says, Maise b'knesas she there was an incident in a shul in Tveria. They would lock the door with this bolt. Until Rab Gamliel and his Kainim came. Again, again, where am I holding over here? And they asked it. They said it's not allowed. Rabbi Yaisi says, no. It was the opposite that happened. They were noyig iser. They did not close the door. With the, they didn't bolt the door closed. But Rabbi Gamliel was kain to be tiralehen, and Rabbi Gamliel and his kainim came and said that it is allowed to use on Shabbos. So that's the machlokes. Machlokes b'metzias. What the story happened over there? So the Gemara explains what's the story with this bolt. Benitol zok the Gemara said. Benitol ba'agdai. If you're talking about a bolt that's tied to the door with a rope, and it's tied properly. Nobody's going to argue that you're allowed to use it to bolt the door closed. Why? Because you know, it doesn't look like you're adding something to this structure by putting this in the door. It's tied with a rope. So then no one argues. When is the argument? If, even if it, Rashi says it's tied with a hevel dak, it's a very, very thin string that is tied to the draw, door, but uh, if you want to take it from there, it's going to snap, and therefore it's not really tied properly to the structure. Mar so therefore one opinion here is, the, the Rabbi Yezid that says that it's Aser, or actually, uh, sorry, Rabbi, Rabbi Yezid says that it's Mutter, Kivin the Yesh Bereshe Glustere, since it has this um, knob on the top of it, Keli, Titus Keli Olov, it's considered to be like a Keli, you can use it for other things, and therefore when you put it into the door, it doesn't look like you're building. It's not, not like a piece of wood that you're adding to the uh, house. Umar Savar, and Rabbi Yaisi says, or Rabbi Yezza says, Kivin de'ein and nitl be'igdoi, loy. Since it's not properly tied to the door or to the house, and that uh, you can take it away from there, so when you put it back, it looks like you're adding a, a new thing to the house, and therefore it, it's mechzi kebayna and it's aser. Okay, so basically in order for it to be muta to carry, or not to carry, sorry, to, to close the door with it, it has to, have a, it has to be tied properly to the door, like in picture of Tovkov Tzalek Tess, and then you can, you can use it on the, uh, on the door. Okay, that picture is also going to get to the next Mishnah. The Mishnah continues on the same subject over here. Then you get to this uh, bolt, and uh, the next few Mishnah is, interestingly, the Gemara goes into halachas that are to the Beis HaMikdash, that there's a lot of different gzaitis of Chazal that they made Bechlal that does not apply in the Beis HaMikdash. There's a klal that we learned also before in Sech the Shabbos, Ein Shvos, bring a chair, Ein Shvos B'Mikdash. The gzaitis of Chazal do not apply in the Beis HaMikdash. And the reason the Derech Klal that's brought is, is because Kainim Zrizim Hain, and Kainim are not, we're not Chayshish, they're, they're going to be even any Yisurim, so there's no Shvos B'Mikdash. So this is the first Mishnah of a few Mishnahs that will discuss this. Zak the Mishnah Nage Hanigra. So this bolt for the door, which is tied to the door, but it's dragging on the ground. Noel and Boy be Mikdash. So in the base of Mikdash, you're allowed to tie, you're allowed to uh, close the door with it. Avoloi be Medina. But not in the Medina, because it's dragging on the ground, it doesn't look like it's tied to the uh, door properly. It looks like the separate thing that's lying on the ground. So therefore, in the in Medina, outside the Beis HaMikdash, there was a Gzaira, you shouldn't use this. So you shouldn't come to add something and to build. 
Vahamunach, something that is not tied to the door at all. It's just lie, lie, it's, it's sitting in a corner, it lies separately. Khan Vakan Asr. Whether it's in the base of Mikdash, whether it's not in the base of Mikdash, either way, it's going to be Asr. Rashi's opinion is, the reason is because in such a case, when it's just lying separately and you take this bolt and you put it into the door to lock the door, it's Baina Mamish. It's not a gzeda of baina. That is mamish baina. You're taking a, a piece of wood and you're sticking it into the ground. You're bolting the door. That's baina. So that's going to be also even in the base of mikdash. Rabbi Yudaimer, Rabbi Yudah says, hamunach, a bolt that's not tied at all. It's lying on the ground. So that's mutter be mikdash. Even that is not baina mamish. It's only asim the rabbanon because it looks like baina. So in the base of mikdash, there's no such gzeda. Vahanigrar. And a bolt that's connected to the door, it's tied to the door, LMI, it's dragging on the ground, that's Mutter even bin Medina. There's no Gzeda at all. As long as it's tied, the fact that it's dragging on the ground doesn't matter. It's tied to the door, there's no, it doesn't look like Baina at all, and you're allowed to uh, bolt it into the door. We learned the same Achleikis in the Braise. What's a, a bolt that's dragging on the ground? That you're allowed in the Beis HaMikdash, there was no Gzeda, and you're allowed to bolt some, a door closed in the Beis HaMikdash with it. But not in any other place outside the Beis HaMikdash. It's connected to the door. But the other side of this uh, bolt is hanging on the ground. It's dragging on the ground. So this is the, the one that the Beis HaMikdash here allowed to bolt it. But the Medina, there were guys there that it looks like Baina and you're not allowed. Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yudah argues, like you said in the Mishnah, no. af Medina Mutter. If it's connected to the door, it's dragging on the ground, but it's a bolt that's tied to the door, that's allowed there all over. What is a bolt that in the Beis HaMikdash is allowed, but not anywhere else? It's not tied, it's not suspended. When you, when you pull it out from the ground, you bolt the door, when you pull it out, the you put it down in a corner. Something that you put down in a corner, so that, according to Rabbi Yehuda, only with the Rabbanan is it going to be Asr. When you, when you bolt the door, it looks like Baina. And therefore, in the base of Mikdash, it's going to be Mutter, and everywhere else, it's going to be Asr. Doesn't every, point, doesn't every bolt have to, if it's tied, it has to drag on the ground, otherwise it doesn't reach into the ground to be able to serve its purpose? No, Abdafka. You could uh, loosen it and tie it, Mustama, that's the Pshat. Loosen it, you have to loosen the. It's when, when it's taken out of the ground and it's connected to the door. So then you, you tie it up, you just tie it up that it shouldn't be hanging on the ground, whatever you, you tie the rope around in a way that it doesn't hang on the ground. And then and you, you, un, you unwind the rope and you put it down. So it's your action that's doing it. So and a and a chanami. Yeah, 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 that's what it looks like here. Yeah. We pass in like Rabbi Yehuda, benigrar. Regarding the case of Nigrar, that Rabbi Yehuda said that if it's connected, if it's tied to the door, even though it's dragging on the ground, that there's no gzeda for that, we pass in like Rabbi Yehuda regarding this case. However, as Rashi points out, we don't pass in like Rabbi Yehuda all the way. Rabbi Yehuda said that when it comes to a uh, Naga, which you put in a Keren Zavis, it's not tied at all, in the Beisam Mikdash there wouldn't be any Gzeda for that. Legabi that, we do not Paskin like Rabbi Yehuda, we Paskin like the Tanakama, that if it's not tied at all, it's Baina Mamish. You're taking a bolt and you're putting it into the ground, it's Baina Mamish, and in that detail we don't Paskin like Rabbi Yehuda. Omar Rav says, Rav Vuhusha Kosher Bedelis. When we say Nigrar, that we Paskin like Rabbi Yehuda, that it's allowed to, put, to bolt the door with it, but it has to be tied to the door itself. In other words, the Chiddush over here is, it has to be die, tied to the door itself, like you have it in the picture, Tovkov Tzadik Tes, and not to the side posts, not to another place. If it's tied further away, so then it's still going to look like Baina. If it's tied right over there to the door itself, so then we pass in like Rabbi Yehuda, that it's not, it doesn't look like you're adding anything to the door. Is this true? Rav Tavla came to Mechuzah, and he saw that there was a bolt that they were using, and it was tied to the, to the doorpost, not to the door itself. And they would use it on Shabbos, they would, hope they would bolt the door with it. And he didn't say anything, he allowed them to use this. So what do we see? It doesn't have to be tied to the door itself, it could even be tied to, a, to, the, to the side. 
And says the Gemara, Hahu nitl beigdoi ave. Over there, it was tied with a very strong rope. Like we said before, when you get to the previous Mishnah, when it's tried, tied with a very strong rope, so then even if it's not tied to the door itself, it's allowed. If it's tied to the door, and it, but it's not tied with a proper good rope, it's tied with some reed or with some very thin string, so then it has to be tied to the door itself. Rav Ivya was in the city Nerda. He saw a person that he tied the uh, he tied the bolt with a gemi, with a reed, with a very thin reed. Omar. So he said to him, Dain loy nitrek. Since it's not tied properly, so do not bolt the door with this bolt. It's not tied properly with a good rope. Boy, Rav Zayda asked the question, Nikmaz mahu. What's the halacha of nikmas? What's the, what's the story with nikmas? So nikmas, so if you see over here in the picture, they don't have a picture for nikmas, but usually when you bolt the door with the bolt, where do you stick it into? Into what do you stick the bolt into? Into the threshold. Nikmas means usually the bolt just goes into the threshold and that, not more. But what happens if the threshold is pierced through and through, and now when you stick in the bolt, it goes into the ground below the threshold. So over here, there's a reason to be more stringent because you're not stop taking the, sticking the bolt into the threshold, but it's going into the ground. So it's more of a baina. You're adding something more into, into the structure, into the ground itself. Pressing. Huh? Pressing. You're pressing it in all the way to the bottom and it goes through into the ground. So in this case, are we more stringent? Am Rav Yasef. Rav Yasef says, Mighty Bayale, why are you asking this question? Lashmile Aditanya, you didn't hear. There's a, there's a clear Braisa about this. What does it say in the Braisa? Nishmat. Asr, that uh, if it's completely taken out, if, this, if the rope that was connected to the door was snapped, so you're not allowed to use it anymore. Nikmas, if it, uh, when you bolt it, it goes all the way into the ground, mutter, that's okay. We're not more machmer because it goes into the ground. Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yudah says, Nikmas, if it goes into the ground, nishmat, even if the, the rope did not snap, but once it, it's bolted and it goes all the way into the ground, Asr. Then it's not allowed because it's more like you're adding to the building of the house. It goes into the ground itself. No, I don't think so. It has to do with the fact that it's not, it's not like a stomach, temporary thing that goes into the threshold. It goes through and through into the ground itself. Over here, Rabbi Yudah is more machmer about this. We pass on like Rabbi Yudah regarding this case of Nikmas when it goes into the ground. The time am I, Omar Abai, the Gemara spells it out, Yemishum de Mechsi Kebaina. When it goes into the ground itself, not just into the threshold, so then it looks more like Baina. Baimene Rav Nuchumi Bar Scharim Abai, Osaloi Beisiat. What if he made a handle to this bolt? Ma, what's that loch? Are you allowed to use it or not? Omalei, so he answered him, Buchne Kaomrit. If it has a handle, so then it's like a uh, mortar that could be used to crush. Uh, garlic with it or whatever, it's, it's uh, keli that you can use for other things. If you have a handle, mutter, then it's allowed, you're allowed to use it. So this case that it says away that it's mutter, if it has a handle, so the Rishayinim say that this refers even to a case where you're sticking the bolt into the threshold and it goes into the ground. That's the Chiddush over here. Because the fact the, 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 we had already in the previous Mishnah, it spoke about a bolt that has a knob. So why is the Gemara asking again a shayla that seems to be very similar? Just like you have a bolt with a knob, you have a bolt with a handle, L'chayre the same thing. And before we had a machleikis in the Mishnah, why is the Gemara asking the shayla over here? Elamai, it's behemshuk to this case of nikmas. When it goes into the ground, and then it's more like baina, but if it has a handle on it, it's allowed. That's the chilesh of the Gemara here. Zag the Gemara, hahu shariyosa, there was a big, very heavy beam. The have a bed of pedos that was in the house of Rab Pedos. It was so heavy. The have a madlulah be'asara. Ten people had to pick up this beam. Vishadullah dasha, and they would uh, throw it against the wall or against the door uh, to, to close the door at night. Vleyamulah vlemidi. They were very afraid. Huh? They had such a such a. They didn't use tame uh, bolt. They used pashat a massive beam that ten people had to lift up to, to, to put against the door. And Rab Pedos didn't tell them anything. He, he allowed them. Omar he said. Taitas keli aleha. This beam is a keli. People could sit on it, and therefore has a halacha of a keli. It's not mukta, and it's it's made to close the door, and therefore it's uh, he didn't he didn't comment about it. Hahi asisa. The have a There was an asisa that was by 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 Shmuel. An asisa is a um, 
Huh? A machteshes. What's the title of that sisa there in English? A, a mortar? Is that what it is? Mortar, or yeah. A mortar, okay. A big mortar that was by, um, by uh, Shmuel, Mar Shmuel. They have a machzekes adrivo. It was a massive mortar. It could hold the size of a half a kor, which is 15 saw, a very big amount. And uh, they would also move it against the door to lock the door at night. Shara Mar Shmuel, the Mishde Adashi. He allowed them to put it against the door at night. Because it's a keli, there's no problem of moving it to put it against the door. Huh? No, mortar. That's uh, the old French, is the same word, yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, no. Sag the Gemara weiter. Okay, that the yeah, that okay, no. Sag the Gemara weiter. Shalach le Rami by Yecheskel Rav Amram. Name alone, Mar. Mehalein mili ma'al yaseh, Master, tell us from these great things, the Omritlon that you once told us, Mishmei de Ravasi, in the name of Ravasi, <coughs> Bekipi de Arva, regarding the arches of a boat. Okay, we're talking here about Baina, so the Gemara brings up a completely different thing, but also about Baina. So if you want to see the arches of a boat, you can take a look over here and picture Tafresh, the last picture on page Pei Aleph. So these boats that they had, so if they wanted to cover the boat, if it was very windy, so they had these arches that went from one side of the boat to the other, and they would spread out on it, these uh, materials to cover the boat. So the question is, are you allowed to spread this out on Shabbos? You're creating a tent, you're creating an oil. So tell us what uh, you heard about this. So he said as follows. Uh, so, Shalach Lei, this is what Ravasi said. So these arches for the boats. If the arches themselves are wide a tefach, even if they do not have the width of a tefach, but between one arch and the other, there's no, you don't have the space of three tefachim, in other words, they're love with each other. So on Shabbos, tomorrow, maybe machzeles, upeides aleyen. You can, you can uh, spread out any materials on it on Shabbos. My time, eh? why? Moisif al oil arayhu. These arches and these uh, materials that would, they would spread out on the boat is called an oil aray. It's not a permanent uh, structure. It's not a permanent tent. Now, if the arches themselves are uh, amma thick, or at least between one pole and another, you don't have three tvachim, so it's lovud, so you already have a partial tent there. When you're adding the material, you're just adding more to the tent that's there already. It already has the, the minimum thickness of a tent of one tefach. So therefore you can put up, you can spread out your material on it. The shapidomi, and it's okay. The Gemara brings uh, another incident that uh, may, says the same halacha. Hane dichri dahavalele ravhuna. So there were these uh, rams that ravhuna had. The bimame bo tula. During the day, it was hot, the sun, so they needed shade. But then at night, they needed to have ear. So what did he do? Usually he would have this tent that he would close, at night, uh, close by day and open by night. But what is he going to do on Shabbos? He can Allah open a tent and, uh, on Shabbos. Also, he came to Rav to ask him what to do. He told him, Go and tie your uh, material. Budya is uh, this, this uh, material that you're going to have for these... Huh? A mat for these... Um, for these rams, and but v'shay but tefach, and so when you tie it up, when you open it up, leave a tefach closed, and then the machar posht. Then tomorrow morning, Shabbos morning, since there's already a tefach of this oil aray that's open, so you could fully spread it out. If you're adding to an oil aray, that's allowed. This is a halacha when you get to different cases also. Huh? Uh, when you get to sukkah, or when you get to sometimes you have a, a case with a, a baby carriage or a stroller where you, you, when it has a, a cover over it, so when you close it and open it and Shabbos, you're not supposed to close it completely, so then you won't be able to close it. depends on the size and the thing, the shape, but it, sometimes it could be negaya. Omarav mishom rabchia. Viloin, a curtain. Mutal in taisa, mutal a You can close it, you can open it on Shabbos. It's not considered to be a uh, permanent thing that has, it doesn't have a... Um, a roof on it, it's, it's just made for tzniyas, so you can open it and close it. It's not like uh, oil on Shabbos. Kilas chasanim. A uh, canopy that's made over a bed, a bridal canopy. Mute leferka ulentaisa b'Shabbos. You're allowed to take it apart and open it and close it on Shabbos. Do I have a picture of here of this bridal canopy? Yeah, make a look in picture. Tofrei Shalaf. Okay. 
So you're allowed to open and close on the Shabbos. This, this Gemara that we're going to learn now is a Chazar of Mamish, almost word for word. We learned this in the Gemara on Shabbos. So Rav Sheshes B'Rei De Ravidi says, When are you allowed to open and close this bridal canopy on Shabbos? If the roof of it does not have the width of a tefach. If it does have the width of a tefach, that's the minimum size of an of a oil. Then it's not allowed. And even if it does not, if the roof does not have a, a width of a tefach, it also was, wasn't said that it's allowed to open and close. Within three tefachim to the height, to the roof, doesn't have the width of a tefach. So it's not enough, if you look in picture Tafresh Beis, it's not enough that the height all the way at the top is, is pointy, comes to a tip, and therefore there's no tefach there, but even if you go lower down, within three tefachim, it can't have the width of a tefach. Okay? Aval. Yesh, bepachas, mishloisha, samach, legag, tefach, if within three tefachim to the roof, it has the, the width of a tefach, asr, it'll be asr. And even if it does not have that thickness of a tefach over there, three tefachim near the roof of it, in the, the incline of it. So you have the both sides that come up, the incline. So if you're going to measure from the bottom of one side of the incline to the middle, and the bottom of the other side to the middle, if you don't have a tefach, in other words, if at the bottom it's not too tefach, wide, then you're not, not going to be allowed. So if you take a look at this uh, Kilas Hassan over here. So if you're going to measure from the bottom to the middle, from each side to the middle, you have to have at least one tefach. In other words, the bottom of this has to be at least two tefachim wide. Only then could you uh, use this open and close this, uh, or take apart this Kilas Hassan on Shabbos. So basically it comes out, Rashi points out of here, Taisis points out, that this uh, bed is tiny. It's a bed that could only be two tefachim wide, which a human being can't use bechlal. So there's a whole pshat and rash over here, how this could work, how you could make it with a few different... Um, uh, how, how it could be done in a way that you could use it on Shabbos and it's wide enough, the bed could be wide enough. But there's a Rashi in Shabbos on the very same Gemara that says that from the Pashat of Shabbat Gemara, it's mashma that this kilas chasanim wasn't made for anybody to sleep in. It was just made for as a nice thing, as a design. As a, huh? As a beauty thing, whatever, decoration. Yeah, it wasn't, no, nobody slept in it. It was a, a tiny, this tiny little thing, a two tefachim. Mm-hmm. Another thing related to something that you're creating a tent. So he said as follows, Saina, his felt hats, shari, you're allowed to wear them on Shabbos. Vatanya Asr, and another Bryce that says if felt hats are not allowed. So what's, uh, what's the uh, halacha? Like kashya. Hod is beit tefach. If you have a felt hat that the brim of the hat extends out a tefach, so then it's like you're creating a tent. So if you put it on your head, it's not allowed. Hod the les beit tefach. It does not have a brim that comes out a tefach. So that's allowed. So that could be an issue of creating an oil by a very wide hat. If that's an issue that you put on a garment that has a very big wide uh, brim, that itself is like making a tent. If a person pulls a garment over his head and extends outward more than a tefach or a tefach, that's going to be a problem. You, he's wearing it. It's a garment. Just because he extended it out, that makes it like a, uh, uh, like, like an oil. So the Gemara El and not, so we're not, we can't accept this. Like Kashia, going back to what we said before about the felt hat, the issue is not the fact that it, uh, it's a tefach and it's like an oil. Ha, the mahadik, if it's snug, if it's tight on his head, so then we're not afraid that when he walks in the street it's going to fly off and he's going to come and pick it up to wear it. Ha, the loy mahadik. If it's a hat that's not snug on his head and it flies off easily, so then we're afraid that it's going to fly off and he shouldn't wear this hat in Shabbos. So it has nothing to do with an oil. Anything you're wearing on your body, even if it extends out a tefach, there's no issue of an oil. Zakta Mishneh, going back to what we spoke about before, Benigetan Nager, about bolting a door. So now the Gemara discusses a similar thing, and also the difference p- between the halacha outside of the base of Mikdash and in the base of Mikdash. Machzirin, Tzir, Atachten, Bemikdash, Avalei, Bemedina. So we're talking over here about a door that uh, is on uh, a closet, a box, or a carriage, or whatever it is, that it has a, um, that has doors that open and close, and you have 
the atzir, let's say the hinges, the, the top hinges and the bottom hinges, or the way it was made then. It didn't mamish have hinges, but there was this pivot. There's a pivot that it stuck in on the top and on the bottom. So what happens if the tzir hatachtain, the bottom pivot comes out? There's a big difference between when, a, when the top hinge of a door comes out or the bottom hinge of a door comes out. When the top hinge comes out, the whole door falls out. When the bottom hinge comes out, it's still hanging on the top and it could still be connected even though the bottom hinge came out. So therefore the Mishnah says, if the tzir hatachtin, if the door, the, the pivot where it's in, on the bottom came out, so you're allowed to put it back in by mikdosh, only in the base of mikdosh. Avaloi be medina, but not in the medina. Because there's no, it's not an iser of binyan, it's just a gzeire that you might come to be baina. So therefore in the base of mikdosh there's no gzeire, but be medina, there is a gzeire on this. But if the top, if the door on the top pivot came out, so then the door completely falls out. Kan vekan oser. Either way, it's going to be oser because that's going to be baina. Rabbi Yudayim and Rabbi Yudayim says no. Ha'el yoyim b'mikdash. Even if the top pivot came out, so then in the base of mikdash it's allowed because there's no gzeire. Va'atachtoim b'medina. If the bottom pivot came out, there's no gzeire whatsoever. And even b'medina, it's going to be allowed to put it in. We learned in the Braise, Tzir, Deles, Shida, Teva, Umigdal, the pivot of, the, of a door, of a Shida, of a Teva, of a Migdal. This is, it is a, a carriage, a box, a closet. So in the Beis HaMikdash, Machzirin, you're allowed to put it back in. In Medina, in the Medina, Deichakin, you're not allowed to put it back in if it completely fell out. But if it's not in tightly, you're allowed to push it back into position. So we're talking over here about the lower pivot, the lower hinge. The ha'el yoin, but the top pivot that came out, kan the kan lo yachser. Whether it's in the base of mikdash, whether it's outside the base of mikdash, you're not allowed to put it back. Gizeire shemo yitka. If there's a gizeire that you're gonna, that the person might fix it back in properly, and bevim toka chayv chatos. And if you do put it back in properly, you use, you're using a tool, you're using a hammer, or whatever it is, to bang it back in properly, then you'll be chayi v'chatos. So Rashi's pshat in this Gemara is, when the Braise here says, G'zei Rishem Yitka, it doesn't refer to what it just said, V'ha'el yoin kam v'kan yachser. If the top pivot came out, so that's awesome in Atayra. When it says Gzeir Hashem Yitka, it's going back to the first part of the Braisa where it talks about the Tzir, Delas, Shida, Teva, Migdal, and it was talking about the bottom pivot. And over there it's saying that there's a Gzeir. That's Rashi's Pshat. Taisus has a different Pshat. Taisus says that the MS is, even when the top pivot comes out, it's also also only because of Gzeir. It's not Baina Mamish. And Taisus here says, and the Taisus says this a few times in the whole Sugya here, that even though there's a Klal, ain't Shvus be Mikdash, but there's exceptions to that. It doesn't mean that there's never any Shvus in the Beis HaMikdash. Taisus brings Raias from different places that even in the Beis HaMikdash there are certain Shvus that they were Gzeir. It depends. The usual shvusim, the usual gzeris of Chazal, they weren't geyser. But there are certain things that are more chomer that Chazal wore geyser. So for example, over here, with this door that falls out, if it's the bottom pivot that falls out and the door is still hanging, so over there, they weren't geyser in the base of Mikdash. But if it's the top pivot that came out, and there's a bigger gzeris that a person is going to use a hammer to bang it in, over there, they wore geyser even in the base of Mikdash. That's Taisa's Pshat. And shall bear, the Braith continues further, shall bear, we shall dus, we shall yatsia. If you have a door of a pit, of a dus, which is a cistern, or a yatsia, like an extension of a building, so these are mamish permanent things in the ground, lo yachser, you're not allowed to put it back. Vim hechser chayv chatos, because we're not talking over here about a closet or a, a box or some, a carriage, we're talking about something that's mamish connected to the ground, so if the door got separated and you put it back on on Shabbos, it's imamish chayv chatos. Zok to Mishneh, another halacha in the difference between the gzeir and the Beis HaMikdosh and all other places outside the Beis HaMikdosh. Machzirin ritie b'mikdosh. In the Beis HaMikdosh, you're allowed to take off a bandage and put it back on on Shabbos. Avaloi b'medina. But not outside of the Beis HaMikdosh. And the reason is, as Rashi explains, and we'll see in the Gemara, that the Kainim, to be able to do their Aveda, they can't have any bandages that's going to separate between them, the, their body, and the keli that they're holding to do the Aveda. It's a chatzitza. So therefore, a Kain that's taking off his bandage, he's doing it for the purpose of the Aveda. And what's the problem with taking off a bandage, putting on a bandage in Shabbos? You might come to be over on the Moloch of Memachik. The Moloch of Memachik is when you're smoothing something out on Shabbos. So, the, so the, huh? Yeah, okay. 
smoothing out the, the ointment that you have on the bandage and Shabbos, so there's exeda for that. But the Kainim and the Besam Mikdash, we're not going for this, they're allowed to take it off for the purpose of their Aveda and then put it back on. But not in Medina. In Medina you have a bandage and you take it off, you're not allowed to put it back on in Shabbos. In Bitchila, but if you're putting on the bandage now for the first time, Khan Vikan Asr. Whether it's in the base of Mikdash, whether it's not in the base of Mikdash, either way it's Asr, because this is not something that you're doing for the purpose of the Aveda. If, if the Kain was wearing the bandage, you have to take it off so it shouldn't be a chatzitze. So you're allowed to put it back on on Shabbos. But to put it on al- on Shabbos, either way, he's not taking, it's not for the purpose of Aveda, you're not allowed to take it off. You're not allowed to do that on Shabbos, even in the Beis HaMikdash. Tan Rabbanon, and Abraisa we learn, Tritiya Shepirsha Me'al Gabe Makkah. A bandage that uh, on Shabbos was removed from your wound. Machzir and Aisa B'Shabbos. You're allowed to put it back on the Shabbos. <coughs> Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yehuda says. In other words, what are we talking about over here? In the Mishnah, we were talking about a person that took off his bandage. So that we said, that you're, not allowed to, you're not allowed to take it off and put it back on. Over here, the Bereis is talking about he didn't take it off. It fell off on its own. So if it fell off on its own, you're allowed to put it back on a Shabbos. And Rashi says the reason is because the bandage that falls off is considered to be a milsa de loish chichet. It's not so common that that happens. I guess at least those the band, bandages today or bandages in those days, it wasn't so common that it should fall off. So in such a case, they weren't geyser and they allowed you to put it back on. They didn't allow you to take it off and put it back on. If they allow a person to do such a thing, he's going to be busy on Shabbos, pay, taking it on, putting it off, and he might come to spread the, the, the ointment on Shabbos. But if it fell off, it's allowed. If it slipped a little bit below the wound, he could push it back on, reposition it and put it onto the wound. If it slipped upward, he could reposition the bandage and put it on the wound. If you need to clean the wound, so you could uncover a little bit of your wound, and you can uh, clean off the wound, and uh, then you um, can uh, uncover another side of the wound a little bit, and you clean the other side of the wound. However, you're not allowed to clean off the bandage itself. If you're going to clean off the bandage itself, you're going to be spreading, you're smoothing out. And if you spread out and you the, the ointment that there is there on the bandage, so you'll be chayev chatas. We pass in like Rabbi Yehuda, which is machmer, that even if the bandage falls off on its own, you're not allowed to put it back on in Shabbos. You can, you can reposition it if it went out of position, but if it totally fell off, you're not allowed to put it back on. Omer Rav Chister, Rav Chister says, Le'shanu ala Shapirsha al Gabi Keli. The whole machloikis over here between the Tanakhama and Rabbi Yehuda is only if it fell off onto a Keli, let's say uh, onto your pillow, onto a pillow. Avo Pirsha al Gabi Karka, but if it fell off and it fell to the ground, Divri Akail Asr, everybody would agree that you're not allowed to put it back on. If it fell to the ground and you pick it up and you're putting it back on, so it mamish looks like you're putting on your bandage for the first time. If you're lying in bed and your, and your uh, bandage falls onto the pillow and you just put it right back on as you're lying there, so then you can see that you're not putting a bandage for the first time. It was, it was, it was on, it just fell onto your pillow. Fell to the ground, so then that's a different thing. Then it looks like you're putting on a new bandage and it's not allowed. Do that, Kaila, sir. Oma Ma Baravashi, Ma Baravashi says, Have a imna kamayabe. I was in front of my father, Ravashi, Noflale Abesadia. So a uh, bandage that he had fell off of him onto a pillow, the Kamahadale, and he put it back on. Aminale, so I told my father, Lisavala Mar Lahodomer of Chista, do you not agree to what Avchista said? Machlaikis Shapirsha Al Gabi Kaili, that the argument between the Tanakame and the Rabbi Yehuda was even in such a case when it fell onto a pillow. Avol Pirsha Gabi Karka Osir. If it falls to the ground, everybody would agree that it's Osir. So there's a machlekes whether you're allowed to put it back on even if it falls onto a pillow. Va'ama Shmuel Aloche Rabbi Yehuda. And Shmuel said even if it falls onto a pillow, it's a machlekes. And we pass in like Rabbi Yehuda that says that it's not allowed once it falls off. You're not allowed to put it back on. Amali Ravashi answered Loi Shmueli. No, I didn't hear what Shmuel said. I disagree with that. If the pillow, if the if the uh, bandage falls off onto a pillow, you can put it right back on, and we don't pass like Rabbi Yehuda.